It's Sunday, June 2nd, 2019. As I sit here this evening and make this video, the Dow futures are down over 180 points. I truly believe that they may be starting to lose control of these markets. Before we start the video today, please make sure you subscribe. Please make sure you share this video and please make sure that you hit the bell notification down below so that you are alerted when the newest video comes out. Dow futures are down over 180 points right now. Are they beginning to lose control of these markets? Please comment down below. I would really like to know what you think. Are they starting to lose control? I wanna go over a list of things about what just transpired in the month of May and why it's quite possible that maybe they are beginning to lose control. But nonetheless, whether they're losing control or not, you need to be getting prepared because at some point they are going to lose control and you're gonna to have to be prepared for what's coming. Let's talk about the month of May. We witnessed multiple collapses. We witnessed a collapse in bullish narratives. We witnessed a collapse in trade talks, a collapse in yields, a collapse in technical structures, a collapse in rate expectations, a collapse in growth uh, projections. We witnessed a collapse in retail, continued collapse in retail. We witnessed the continued collapse of, of housing sales. And yes, we witnessed a collapse in stocks in the month of May. These are not the sign or signs of a stable economy quite the opposite. We're witnessing the signs of a very unstable, uncertain, and unpredictable economy and unpredictable markets that they may be losing control of. You know, we know that a rate cut is coming. We know that more quantitative easing is coming. And that is telling every one of you that these markets and this economy is uncertain, it's weak, it's unstable, and you need to be prepared for uncertain, unstable times. You know, the markets may be up for 2019, but they are still way below the 2018 highs. These markets and these algorithms literally can go up 500 points or down 500 points on a tweet by the president or Steve Mnuchin or Jerome Powell. Is this the sign of a stable economy when one tweet can dictate um, whether the markets go up 500 points or down 500 points. I don't believe that this is the sign of a stable economy. I believe that, 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 or these markets, I don't believe this is a sign of a stable market or a stable economy. I believe that this economy and these markets are very unstable. And again, you need to be getting prepared because I believe that we're gonna see some very, very dicey times starting this summer. Let's talk about a few things that may also be influencing what's coming. This just came out over the weekend. Uh, Trump uh, announced late Friday that his administration was terminating India's designation as a developing nation under a trade program that allowed Indian exporters to ship 2,000 products into the U.S. duty-free. This new standard will go into effect June 5th. So uh, apparently Trump will be slapping a tariff on India uh, as they've been getting away with paying nothing to export goods into America. As we know, we have a tariff now slapped on China. We have a tariff that will be slapped on, on uh, Mexico this month, I believe the 10th. And now we will have another tariff going on India and a multitude of other countries. Uh, America has been getting ripped off for decades. Now, is this going to affect the markets? Yes, of course it is. But in the long run, I believe that this is good for America as we cannot continue to be ripped off by countries like Mexico and China and even India as they make billions and billions of dollars off of us as we import this, this garbage that is made with slave labor garbage products, 80% uh, of our prescription drugs now coming from China as we become more dependent on the manufacturing of other countries instead of our own. And it's really unfortunate that we're here and this president is gonna be labeled as the bad guy because he's the first guy in decades to stand up and, and, and to try and stop this. 
So we have more issues than just tariffs and being in trade wars. We have um, ticking time bombs like Deutsche Bank out there. You know, we could call that a, a black swan right there. Deutsche Bank is a ticking time bomb. They are a black swan. Deutsche Bank is sitting on $50 trillion of derivatives. These uh, derivatives, they're, they're Deutsche Bank's tentacles, okay? Their derivative tentacles go into the biggest Wall Street banks here in America. If Deutsche Bank blows up, banks here in America are going to blow up also. The next epic financial crash is just one counterparty blow up away. And, and you know, if a big bank blew up here, it's going to affect banks in Europe. But this German bank, Deutsche Bank, is a ticking time bomb as their stock right now this evening on Sunday is at $6.77. So if this stock falls under $6.50, $6.40, you know, $6.10, at some point Deutsche Bank is not going to stay in business. What happens to the $50 uh, trillion of derivatives? What happens if Deutsche Bank goes down? Who's going down with them? Um, how many people are going to go down? How many banks are going to go down? How many financial institutions are, is Deutsche Bank going to take down with them? This, again, is Lehman Brothers times a thousand. This is a literal, literal nuclear bomb uh, ticking right now. And if it goes off, the entire world is going to feel the repercussions of Deutsche Bank. We're seeing more warning signs of this economy changing. Mansion bus. This is on uh, Zero Hedge today. Mansion bus. Hamptons estate sells for 46% discount. It was bought for $35 million uh, just recently. It was listed for $75 million back in 2003. It sold for $35 million, as I said, and that is about $14 million less than the most recent asking price. We're also seeing big problems in Los Angeles like the Beverly Hills area, where these mega mansions uh, have gone up. Uh, and so now the market is, is, is uh, the buying market is shrinking as they have overbuilt these mega mansions. The buying pool has shrunk. And so now you have, uh, you know, these builders and uh, these investment groups that built these massive houses, 20 million, uh, 80 million, 100 million uh, plus dollar homes, that they're sitting on, that they're having to maintain. These houses don't sell overnight. There's very few buyers in the world that can afford to buy them. But maintaining, you know, a 70,000 square foot house on acreage uh, costs a lot, a lot of money. It costs millions of dollars a year just to maintain these properties. On top, uh, uh, you know, they've got to um, carry these loans. Somebody's paying on these homes until they sell. So you've got massive loans to build these properties and then the massive amount of money to maintain these properties until they're sold. So big problems happening in the Hamptons, big problems happening out in Los Angeles with these massive homes. We have other problems. We have a pension crisis in Chicago. Just the beginning, just the beginning. Uh, taxes, I'm going to kind of paraphrase this article on Zero Hedge. Taxes are high and the services that those taxes pay for in Chicago are horrible. The debt load is extremely high and unstable. This is helping to collapse the real estate market in Chicago as a pension crisis is looming. Not just Chicago, but the entire state of Illinois is bankrupt. Again, all they can do is pour more money after the problem and they get deeper and deeper into debt. Who is going to bail out Chicago? Who's going to bail out Chicago's pensions? Who's going to bail out the state of Illinois? I mean, again, this is literally a nuclear bomb sitting in the center of our country in the Midwest, and it's ticking. Chicago annuals, uh, annual pension payments have doubled over the past few years to nearly $1.2 billion. In 2017, homeowner taxes were increased by $224 million. So what, at the end of the day, what happens? They go after you. They go after you. You're going to pay higher taxes at the store, or you're going to pay uh, higher taxes on your property, your land, or your or or your home, to help uh, substitute uh, these huge losses for these pensions. So, uh, at the end of the day, they're going to come after you and squeeze as much blood out of the turnip as they can. Chicago now has the 
the highest residential property tax rate of any American city. So again, who saves Chicago? Who saves the state of Illinois? It is just a matter of time. That Titanic is going down, okay? But apparently the music still plays as they believe they can just rob the taxpayer and the homeowner to pay for these massive losses while they've just you know overspent and robbed these pensions. And it's a complete mess in the state of Illinois and the beautiful, uh, well, at least was beautiful city of Chicago. There's been a story going around this weekend and it's regarding the EBT system, EBT and SNAP. Please comment down below and let me know what you think about this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go over this story. A major outage of electronic benefit cards is developing very fast nationwide. And this, this is regarding the SNAP EBT system outage that is happening right now. Uh, in many places, particularly New York, Chicago, and Detroit, this is where they're seeing the most outages. Uh, could we see possible riots because of this. Um, how long would it take for EBT and SNAP to be out before people started looting, looting and rioting in the streets of America? Another ticking time bomb. Just think if our grid went down, if there was a cyber attack and people could not get their, their um, SNAP or EBT, what would happen in the streets of America, Ex especially what would happen in the urban cities here in America, like Chicago, Detroit, New York, Washington, Philadelphia, Los Angeles, what would happen in these parts of America? I think I know what would happen. I'm very curious to, to know what do you think would happen? How long would it take for these systems to be down before we started seeing massive violence in the streets of America. Uh, what would America see if the grid went down? What would we start seeing? Uh, you know, water systems go down, um, the EBT goes down, you may not be able to use your credit card, um, you may not be able to use your bank card. So what would happen? How long would it take before the stores were wiped out, before we saw mass looting, um, you know, I remember seeing what happened in the LA riots, um, the massive amounts of violence and looting that took place in Los Angeles, how quickly things can erupt and get very, very chaotic, very violent, and lots of people uh, dying. So I wanna to touch base on one more thing regarding the EBT system and the outage. This electronic system SNAP, EBT, that so many people are dependent on. These people that are dependent on this system, these are the most unprepared people in America. They are the most dependent people on America. And so many of these people will be victims when this whole economy collapses. If we saw a dollar collapse, the US government went broke. Um, you know, if there was a cyber crash, you name it. These people are dependent on the US government. And it is why I'm so adamant that every one of you is not dependent on the US government, that you are dependent on God and yourself. Um, as you know, I say be as least dependent on anything but yourself and God. And these people are so dependent. I mean, they depend, their whole life depends on the US government. As long as the US government stays in business, they eat. They, they have a roof over their head because you know they're getting Section 8 housing, they're getting free food. Um, and, and a lot of these people, I, I'm sure, need the help, I get it. But there's a lot of people that you know are capable of getting out and doing something other than just being dependent 100% on the US government. But nonetheless, we have millions, tens of millions of people who are dependent on the US government for whatever reason. And these people, are again the most unprepared people because they are dependent on a government. Do not be one of these people. Do not depend on a bank, a financial institution, or a government. Depend on yourself because when the lights go out, when the money stops, when things collapse, the US government, the banks, the financial institutions, and most of your churches are not gonna be there for you. The only thing that's gonna be there for you is God, and yourself and your family. And even that, even family, a lot of people's family probably won't even be there for them. So depend on God and yourself and that's it. 
and that's where where you got to be um but again do not be dependent on these entities because they're not going to be there for you i feel bad for these people because these people have no idea what's coming okay if they did they probably wouldn't be dependent on the government uh, let's talk about another thing here. As I've said on a couple of videos ago, nearly 25% of Americans, okay, these people are working. Americans are using debt to pay necessities. So 25% of Americans are using credit cards to pay rent, to pay food. And it takes us right back to where, what we were just talking about. What if we had a cyber attack? What if the grid went down? Um, your plastic cards, your bank cards, your credit cards aren't working. How are you going to get food? How are you going to pay for stuff? You need to be preparing right now. You need to have an emergency fund put away that you have cash and that you have hard assets put in, okay? You have food and water. You have gear. You have security. You need to be getting prepared, okay? Um, we are not seeing too much good news. And listen, I'm going to be the first person to, to tell you the good news. I wish that we were booming right now. I wish that we had free markets. I wish that America was really succeeding, okay? But it's not. Uh, I, I want to go over another story, Zero Hedge Today. We just uh, saw our first large group of people from Africa now coming over the Rio Grande. So... As people are dependent on EBT, SNAP, they're dependent on their credit cards. All these people in America now dependent, tens and tens of millions of people dependent on a plastic card, whether that's your, your uh, credit card or your EBT card. Tens of millions of people in America are dependent on plastic to survive. Wow, we have people now being apprehended. 116 people were just apprehended from Angola, the Cameroon and the Congo after they illegally crossed the Rio Grande River uh, into the U.S. this past Thursday. So as um, America goes broke, as we are uh, witnessing a collapse taking place presently, uh, we have millions of people coming to America, unskilled, uneducated. While our jobs here are all being replaced with technology and AI, what are these people going to do for work as tens and tens of millions of Americans are dependent on plastic and the government to take care of them? Here's another one on Breitbart today. Nearly nine in 10 people coming into this country, not legally, uh, have recently been released into the U.S. and not showing up to court hearings. So 90% of the people that we arrest are given a court date, and 90% of those people are never coming back to that court date. They are just out in the U.S. somewhere doing something. So now we have people coming from all parts of Africa. Uh, we have people coming from South, Central America, uh, Asia, Europe, wherever. They're coming from everywhere. And the ones that we do catch, uh, they get a court date, 90% aren't showing up. And what about all the ones we're not catching that nobody even knows about? So I'm going to wrap this video up. But uh, to me, it is just a crime what is taking place here in America as millions of people's lives are being jeopardized, whether that be by crime, whether that be with health, with the amount of sick people that are being just released into America. And what's really sad also is the amount of money the taxpayer is going to have to flip for all this. Um, somebody has to pay for millions of people being here. And we're all going to pay either with our security, with our health, or with our pocketbooks. Guys, you know, we all have got to start getting involved by doing something. We have got to get in the arena today here in America. We got to get in the fight. You got to get in the arena, whether that's calling your, your politicians, whether that's going to a protest, whether that's making a video, whether that's waking up your friends, waking up your congregation at church, whether that's just doing something, okay, or being ready to do something. We are in big trouble here in America. And too many people sit here and judge other people, judging people making videos, judging people um, who have a different opinion. Listen, 
We all have got to get in the arena now and start raising our voices and stop judging people. Because if we just want to judge and criticize people while all this is happening to our country, while our country is going down a toilet bowl, um, then nothing's going to stop it from going down the toilet bowl. Get in the fight, get in the arena, and start doing something other than criticizing and judging other people. We are losing this great country. I'm going to leave it on that note. Please pray for this president, pray for this country, and start getting involved any way you can, even if it's a little bit. If everybody did a little bit right now, we'd be in a much better place. So get prepared and get in the arena. America needs every person out there to start getting involved. God bless every one of you. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you very soon.